All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Today, what we're going to do is talk about how to make AI content sound human. We're going to talk about how to get through this entire mess of what's going on with the Google search engines, the Google algorithms, AI, junk content, irrelevant content, and the whole nine yards. And maybe you find yourself having a struggle looking at stats like this, where you're like, hey, wait a minute. I was ranking in Google, I was making money, I was getting traffic, and now all of a sudden, like this person here, over three-fourths of your traffic is gone pretty much overnight. What do we do about that? How does that work? We're gonna look at this, we're gonna take a look and dive into this in a very, very specific way. Or maybe you're trying to do AI content and you keep running into this brick wall right here that says AI content detected. Right? How many of us have gone out there, we've worked our tail off to make good content with AI, only to find out that AI content is detected, it is a robotic voice, and we might not stand the chance of showing up in the search engines or staying in the search engines. Today, we are going to talk about this and what to do. There are some shocking things you are going to learn in this training. It is not what other people are talking about. One of the things about me is I have literally uh, stats of thousands and thousands of web pages and hundreds of thousands of different keywords and rankings that we look at on pretty much a weekly, monthly basis to understand exactly what's going on in the marketplace. As we know, Google search is a multi-trillion dollar industry. And looking at that, we need to understand exactly what's going on. Now, we need to see this because, you know, what is it that makes the difference between AI content detected and human text? We are all coveting that wonderful human text thumbs up from the robot saying that our content was not, in fact, written from a robot or by a robot. So today we're going to talk about this. We're going to look at some content examples. We're going to break them down. We're going to go through a guide showing you exactly what you need to know. But again, I know you've probably been watching a lot of videos on this topic, maybe trying to get your AI content up to snuff, and nothing seems to be working. And what I'm here to tell you is that we've come through a lot of the advice. We've looked at all the stuff that's out there, or a lot of it. I'm not going to say all because you never know, right? But we've looked at a lot of stuff out there, and some of them are going through and talking about things that don't really matter. And the last thing I want you guys to deal with is having done all this work to get the magic AI score, and then finding out that that isn't the score that matters. And I know this might be a blow to some of you where you're like, hey, I've been working so hard to get that magic score. I'm not ranking, I'm not getting traffic, I'm not making money, I'm not where I wanna be. And folks, this is because we are focusing on the wrong thing. What we need to focus on is the right thing. And what we're gonna see is that there are major changes happening and they're actually easier for us content creators. Now, is it easy in the sense that I could go out there and create 10,000 articles tomorrow about topics I don't know about? No, that's not the case. But what we are seeing is there is a change in what's going on. We are seeing that there are sites and we got tons of examples. We're going to show you some sites that are doing well. We're going to show you some sites that got hammered. We're going to show you some sites like this one here that had tons and tons of position changes. Now, why are we going to look at these? Because the devil is in the details. And I think while most people are focusing on AI content as the be all end all, what Google is doing is something very different. After looking at thousands and thousands, probably millions of keywords between all the people that work here, we have found that there are some interesting things going on. Number one, I am seeing that the changes are not so much AI content. AI content is still ranking. It will continue to rank. And dare I say, there's something up with those AI tools, which we're going to get to in just a minute, because a lot of people are banking their whole future on passing an AI test, when in fact, that is not always the goal we should be focusing on. The second thing we need to look at is understanding. Now, if you don't get these, it doesn't matter if your content passes AI or not, because what Google's looking for is the check mark of, does your content help the user? This is where I believe the Google engine is getting smarter in understanding what words mean. While we go through, and in the old days, we could rank for something like how many calories are in a banana that is five days old, right? 
now we might see that Google is looking at that and saying, oh, banana nutrition. This is about banana nutrition, not so much calories in a banana. Therefore, they are rewarding the people talking about different nutrition stuff. AI, not AI, doesn't matter. What matters is, are we getting this checkbox? Now, another thing that I've, I've learned, right, that goes into the understanding. The banana is, OK, we're talking about nutrition. We're talking about all this other stuff. That's where this goes. If you're talking about working out, something like, how many chest presses should I do at 30 years old if I want to get ripped? That keyword, Google's looking at it more as an understanding type thing because they want to understand why people are doing this. Now, another thing I noticed, which one of the sites that I brought up is going to show you, is that I believe from the data I have seen that Google is more importantly targeting keywords rather than AI as a whole. Now, do they want AI to flood the search engines? Of course not. Nobody wants that. But when we look at the different words, what we're seeing, much like the helpful content of old, where they would target reviews, products, things like that, we are seeing that words are primarily getting a change. And this is where you see, OK, Reddit is ranking 4 out of 10 results for a certain keyword. Is that because Reddit's doing a better job? Or is that because that word has a different understanding according to Google? This is super, super important. And if you're paying attention, we are on the precipice right here where things are about to change. And some people are just going to watch it happen. And some people are going to ride the wave because the numbers are going to go up astronomically. Let me show you what I mean. So over here. If we take a look at some of these keywords that change, what we're doing is we're taking a look at a site like this that's talking about soap operas and different things like that. And we're looking at the words that were lost in the last update. Okay, So if we look at some of the words that are lost, not just not declined, we want ones that have actually lost, we're seeing where the differences are. Now, again, a lot of people have a lot of speculations. Um, Jim says his site's doing really well with, with AI content. Again, focusing on what the user wants is super, super important. Now, when we look at this, you're going to see that a lot of people speculate about a lot of things, right? They're going to speculate about, oh, hey, these sites like the J Post, which is a news site, which is known for aggressively using AI in a crazy way. They're saying, oh, these are going to get hit really hard. And I think the reason they're going to get hit is not so much the AI. right? The AI is not the problem. The problem is, is they're abusing their site for words that are on the flag list, where it's like, hey, if you're talking about reviews, yeah, AI needs to be out of there because AI really can't review something. It can't actually look at a product. Now, interesting. Can AI, as we've seen in Amazon, which has been helpful, can AI go through a bunch of reviews and tell you a summary so that you don't have to look at 40,000 reviews? Yes, it can. And there is a place for that type of content. I'll talk to you more about that in a minute. But first, what we need to understand is what is causing this to happen and how do we get around it? Now, when we were to look at the keywords here, if we were to go and look at jpost.com slash brand blend or whatever it is, this is basically their sponsored area where you could do a press release. Now, we're seeing that this is actually going up. The keywords, the traffic is going up. What type of stuff? Look at this. This is since the, the update. Now, will this stay? We don't know. This technically borders on the line of um, site reputation abuse. It borders on it. But if it's good press releases, I mean, if the press is sharing things on CNN and it is newsworthy, that might actually be OK. These are interesting areas. And I don't think the nature of the beast is so much hitting that magic AI button. OK? So we want to look at that and understand what's going on. Now, some other things we want to take a look at is plagiarism and um, uniqueness. Google is saying they want unique. Doesn't matter if it's AI, it matters if it's unique. 
is it bringing something else to the table? And we're going to talk about how all this works as well. Now, if we're to take a look at the keywords that JPost is going for, a lot of it is your run-of-the-mill clickbank, clickbaity, junky products with the word review attached to it. So Fitpresso reviews, whatever this is, Fitpresso, some kind of espresso drink, right? And what we're seeing here is, ladies and gentlemen, if I wanted to find Fitpresso reviews, would I actually get good content here, right? We're seeing site reputation abuse on YouTube, right? It's, it's abusing the platform with not having reviews. You could see those videos are most likely the same people doing the same video. They're within seconds of each other. So we're looking at this and we're like, wait a minute, this is, this is more or less spam. Then we see news sites at the top, right? This is complete and utter reputation abuse. And if you go and look at these pages, you are going to see that these do get the AI flag because let's face it, they were 100% AI written. And here's one here that was for LivePeer, 61% AI. And again, sit tight. We are going to have a session on how these work. We're going to go through in this call and talk about the AI tools. Are they good? Are they bad? What are they doing? Because a lot of people are struggling to understand, well, where is the fair amount? What is good? What is bad? What is AI? Uh, Jim says his site is doing unique AI content, and he's getting about 1,100 visitors a month. And we're seeing that across a lot of things. Now, this one here from JPost, ranking number one, right? If we go through the number one actual ranking is 100% AI content. I would venture to say it's probably also plagiarized because I'm sure they're using it in other places as well. So this begs the question, ladies and gentlemen, is this magic number of 100% AI or 100% human the only number that matters? Now, again, I'm going to tell you a little story. I think I need some more coffee for this story, but I didn't get my coffee, so let me go grab that here. This story is an important one, and it comes back from the days uh, when I used to be a preacher. Back when I was a preacher, um, I was friends with this guy. We preached all the time. That's all we did. And um, in addition to fixing up the cars that I talked about in our last training, um, he also was a science guy. He would go out there and on electric products, anything that plugs into the wall, let me see if I have something here. Yeah, something like this that plugs into the wall. There should be a little UL listing, which means, hey, we tested this. It ain't going to like have a problem. There it is right there. You could see, I don't know if the, the lighting's good enough, but you could see the little UL listing right there. Right? What that means is that product was extensively tested to make sure that, hey, if you get a drop of water on it or something happens to it, it's not going to have an issue right out of the get go and, and it is safe. And so what he would do is his job would be to take these products and literally put them through the ringer. Right? He would go there, he'd take the product, he'd drop it on the ground, he'd drop it off of the top of the building, he'd you know, put it next to a, a fire pit and test out these products in a crazy way to make sure they were legit. Now, the same thing happens here online. What I do is I test these things extensively. And I gotta tell you, testing copy leaks, which is a great tool, copy leaks is fantastic. The amount of times that we test it we literally did like the UL guy, tested and tested and tested, and found out the breaking points. And what I found out is that the same content will get flagged 100% AI with test one, and the same exact content will get flagged 100% human in test two. Nothing changed other than the time that I hit the button. So what we're seeing here is that a lot of these, right? Because we're looking at it, we're like human text, this one with the same one. So this here was 100% AI. Everything was red. Down here, the same text was now 100% human. Then we tested it with GPT-0, got 100% probability AI generated. Then we tested it with Quillbot and got a zero AI. Then we tested it with Scribber and got a 54% AI. 
So what we're seeing here is that running these through the test, I literally think that the AI tools that are detecting AI are full of it. I think that they, they really don't know. I think they have an idea, but I think they don't know. Now, are they good and are they consistent at truly human content? Yes. I have found across the board, when you run truly human content through the mix, right? Like, let's say we go to this domain appraisal tool. I wrote this the other day. Didn't take very long to write. And I found that this thing is consistently getting flagged as human content, right? If we go through and we do a scan, and I, I wrote it, so there is no quarrel, right? If we do a scan here, um, we can see exactly what is going on, and it will um, test it for us. Now, hopefully, it'll do OK with the images. But showing this, we have to look at that. And again, like Jill says, it's a complete and utter mess. We don't know. This one says 100% not AI content. So we don't really know what's going on. And I think that a lot of this stuff is hit and miss. I don't think it's 100%. I know that there are other tools, like one that uh, my friend runs. Um, she runs the content at scale one, uh, Julia. And you know their tool sometimes is hit and miss. And when we're looking at this, we have to understand, is this the be all end all? Now, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, I'm going to show you a four minute hack to get around some of this stuff to understand what's going on. But first, we need to look at the, the truth here. There are false positives. Okay, so if there's false positives in these tools and the tools are adapting fast. I mean, last year when we were testing out AI content, I ran it in the tool, 100% human. This year, same exact content, 100% human. What's 100% uh, AI, sorry. Uh, what's going on here? Well, let me tell you something important. That content that so many people, and how many of you guys, if you're honest with me, type it in the box and say, dude, uh, I hate these tools because I'm trying to write good content with AI and the tools just flag it and make me think that I'm not doing a good job. Okay, and you might be doing a good job. I'm going to show you that in a minute. We got a little checklist we're going to go through to show you how to make this work. But those numbers can be annoying. I've been there. I've done that. I've been frustrated making a good piece of content that just has junk. Right? Very important. Okay? And what about the tools? Like, we look at content at scale. I mean, I don't even want to know what I've paid. I know I've paid probably close to 50000 or at least $30,000 on AI content, and is it up to fluff? Is it what's actually working? So we're going to look at that and look at it um, and understand what's going on. So false positives are absolutely happening. But I will tell you the constant. The constant is that same article that was flagged bad, right, then flagged good is still ranking in Google. Still ranking in Google. So we have to look at that and understand exactly how this works. I think it's super, super, super important. How's our audio, audio quality? We, we doing okay? All right, next, one of the things that I'm seeing across a lot of sites is a lot of rankings that went down are now returning. Interesting, so a lot of people freaked out, a lot of things happened, and we're showing some things are starting to correct. Great. Then we are also seeing a mix. We have seen terrible content winning, spam, junk, garbage, and we've seen good content winning. Now what I'm seeing is it's like the cream rises to the top. The good content is going to win. But let's face the question. Let's face it. What is good content anyway? What constitutes good content? What's good? What's bad? OK, so we have to understand exactly what is going on. Is our audio OK? OK, so when looking at this, we are going to understand exactly what these numbers mean and what is going on. So here we see that this site lost a lot of traffic. Here we're seeing another one right here where they gain traffic. So this one is actually gaining. We could see that um, the helpful content update, the recent one, hit right here. They skyrocketed. Why? 
why would this happen? Okay, another one here. We are seeing this one spiked right there, right around the time of the helpful content. So what is going on? Well, what we need to understand is what happens when it comes to AI content, right? When we look at these and we take a look at some of these that are doing well, let's say we look at um, online doc translator or, or grammar or something like that. When we look at sites like this, what we need to understand is what the nature of the word is. If I want to have a ranking for response to what's up buttercup, right? What is the response to what's up buttercup? Apparently a hundred people every single month want to know that. What would be good content for that? Does it matter if it's AI? What would constitute it? Now, is it going to be just junk that's regurgitated? Now, what we're seeing is that there's two things Google and other search engines are mainly looking for. Is it unique? And is it plagiarism? So if I'm just going to go out there and put the same response that is on the top three websites, that is not helpful. Okay? So what would be helpful? What would be helpful is maybe a conglomeration of different sites or maybe expanding on them. What, what is uh, this or what is that? Or maybe different languages or things like that based on what people need, based on what they want. Again, looking at a site like this, you will see it did have a drop. Why did it drop? Was it AI content? I don't know. Let's see. This one here uh, was for how to stop or sorry for wasting your time. All right. If we were to take a look at this one, let's take a look at how this works. And we're also going to take a look at review words because those are important as well. And I will tell you, uh, last night I did a test where we literally went through and I checked on um, quotes. I got a list of quotes, we put them in the tool, and it flagged them as AI. And it's like, well, wait a minute, how could Thomas Edison be flagged as AI when there wasn't even computers in his day? Again, that's what we're seeing here. This one is showing um, zero AI content, but again, it's showing the different types of words. So this is, again, the title of the content is going to be key, 10 polite ways to say, sorry for wasting your time. Interesting. Okay, so again, looking at what is behind the word. This understanding is what you're going to see is huge. This is where title is everything. Now, I think that based on what we're seeing with AI, AI detection, and the search engines, title is going to be a big player. Because if I have 10 polite ways to say sorry for wasting your time, and I do that in AI. Let's, let's do a test here and let's see how this works and then we will rewrite it, rewrite it and show you what's going on. So if we go over here to chat GPT, right like this, and we log in apparently, all right, please write an article for sorry for wasting your time. Let's see what AI gets. Sorry for wasting your time and open apology. Okay, so what this is doing is giving me an apology. Oh, let's see, let's go to the right camera here. What it's doing is it's giving me a apology rather than the 10 ways. Okay, does that make sense? Right, so now we have something, and most people would look at this and be like, hey, wait a minute, if this could pass the test, would this, how many of you guys would not know this from good content? Right, so right here, let's say we went into this writer, analyzed the text, straight out of ChatGPT, 81% human-generated content. So most people would say, hey, this is passable. It's about the keyword. It makes sense. And Google's going to say, eh, wrong. It is not. It does not work for what you're trying to do. But it does show human-generated. And I can go through and I can say, well, let's, let's focus. And this is what people are doing. They're focusing on the wrong thing. They're like, hey, wait a minute. Let's fancy this up. Okay, great. Now, please add some persona and burstiness, burstiness, which is like the variation of sentences, and some facts and stories to make it sound more human. And again, 
what most people are doing is they're taking content like this, they're saying, hey, well, it passes AI, therefore it's good content. AI detection is not an indicator of good content as we're seeing right here, right? Does that make sense to everyone where we're like, hey, wait a minute, this says 100% AI, this one over here, um, it said 81, now it's down to 80% 80, 80%. Let's try it with the burstiness or whatever that is. All right, so did it rewrite it? Oh, there we go, to make it sound more human. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna go through and do all this stuff and, and make the article more human. But all you're doing is putting lipstick on a pig that is bad content. Does that make sense? And this is what so many other people are teaching. We see this everywhere. Now, what I'm gonna do in a minute is we're gonna show you how to understand what the keyword is about and how to make it human as well. Because if we can match these two, even when using AI, I think we have something that we can use, okay? And what's gonna happen is you're gonna need to draw on your personal experience, things that you know. If you're writing an article about a vacuum, everyone here has vacuumed at some point, hopefully. Otherwise, you might wanna get someone to vacuum your house, right? Everyone has done that, so you do have more experience than a robot when it comes to vacuuming. Um, a lot of us have robot vacuums. I can't stand ours. I think it's the biggest waste of money ever. Um, no, nothing bad about the old robot. I just don't like tripping on it. I, I, it's like, get out of the way. But at any rate, when you look at this, a lot of us have gone through and we have used a lot of the things that we're gonna talk about. And we're gonna show you how to do that. So using the burstiness and the perplexity and all that other stuff, we're up to 84%. But again, 84% of a crappy article is junk, It's junk. You're never gonna make this fit because what's happening is your first sentence is wrong. The first sentence, a sincere apology, learning from the time I've wasted, is not fitting for that keyword. And you can see, like if you want a key, look at what is in the homepage of Google. Sorry for wasting your time, Quora. Saying sorry implies you're late, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's some music, right? More Reddit. Other ways to say, apologize for wasting time. Examples, sorry. So now we're seeing that the idea is how many different ways to say this, not about wasting your time, okay? So what we're seeing is that this is the key, and that is probably why this one dropped out of the ranking because they didn't exactly fit it, okay? So we're gonna see these changes happen, and again, it, it has to do with the starting point. I don't care how the finishing works, we need to look at where the starting point is, okay? Here's another one, okay? This one here, we have uh, septic safe laundry detergent. This is a commercial keyword. Ladies and gentlemen, you rank for this keyword, you're gonna make some money unless you're not paying attention. So if we were to look at septic safe laundry detergent, okay, what are we seeing? Well, first of all, we see products right at the top. Is that because Google wants to make money? Well, yes and no. I think that products do fit because if I was looking for coffee that's not bitter, obviously products of coffee that's not bitter would fit. I don't necessarily wanna read about it, I just wanna know which ones fit the mold. So looking at this, set nine best septic safe laundry detergents. Here's another, Amazon, um, something on Oregon State, and Reddit, and on and on we go. So looking at a word like this, you might think, oh hey, Reddit is getting the favor because of Google's agreement with Reddit. Those are not related. As much as people like to say they're related, they are not. Google has an agreement to have it train their AI, but that doesn't have to do with why they're ranking. The fact that they got that agreement is because they're ranking, because they're like, okay, this is good content, and that's what Google wants is good content. Again, these are my uh, opinions. I don't work for Google. This is just stuff that I've seen. Always focusing on helpful content we're seeing is rising to the top, okay? Very important. Other keywords we can see, like how to clean the hey dudes, I think those are shoes, best ironing board, and on and on we go. Looking at something like this, if you crack the code to it, that's a lot of money at stake. 
4,000 visitors in the laundry detergent market. If you know what you're doing, you can make some decent money with that. I'm talking like, yeah, more than $1,000 for sure. Uh, maybe even more like five, maybe 10, depending on how and what you're promoting. Now, again, looking at these is super important because what you're gonna see here, like this one, right? This was about this Viore product, okay? And I found, okay, this person here was ranking number one for the word Viore, and now they're not. Why? These are the things we want to look at. Was it AI or was it something else? Looking at this here, we can see they do not rank now. Six months ago, it was one of their biggest rankings. I believe this was the site. Viore, something like that. Um, and it was one of their biggest rankings. And what we found out is, wait a minute, it changed. Why did it change? Because someone looking up a brand name wants to go to the brand name site, not a site about the brand name, unless it has something else attached to it. Again, that's why we're looking at the nature of the word. Here's one with a review. Here's one where to buy it. Uh, here's another um, overview of it, six month review. So reviews are working, but again, the number one spot is now taken by this right here. And again, I'm pretty much looking at these, you're seeing a lot of these may or may not be AI. Um, and looking at this here, let's see if we could find like this one. So they have a review. Let's see how they're doing. And looking at this data is going to give you far more info on what constitutes good content. And it looks like, okay, so that was not there. Now it is there. 231 keywords, doing really well. Let's see what else this site ranked for. Okay, interesting. So now we're seeing like best travel backpack. These are the words that we are often seeing hit with AI content because more or less they're not fitting the overview, right? They're not fitting the review mark because obviously AI has never worn a backpack. Now, notice something interesting here. How many of you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys a minute to put your thinking caps on. And I want you to see if you notice anything interesting with these versus the keyword. Okay, so if we look at the keyword, we'll look at it here to make it bigger. So we have New York Times, this one, New York Times, then we have this here. Okay, I'm going to give you a minute. I want you to look at something very interesting here because the keyword is best travel backpack. And now we're seeing something different, right? We see this here, we have Swiss gear, we have um, carry on. And what's happening is this one's actually about a specific type of backpack. So they were going for Tortuga backpack, but inadvertently they got best travel uh, backpack. Interesting. All right, these are different change-ups we're gonna start to see as well. Now understanding that, okay, AI content is Unless you direct it properly, it's going to miss the mark, right? And let's see where it ranks for this one. Does it even rank for the Tortuga backpack? That would be kind of interesting to see. And these are the things that you want to start to look at and study uh, when it comes into, you know, making this work. So now we're seeing the keyword that they went for, they're ranking lower for than best um, travel backpack. Right? How many of you guys find this interesting other than me? Smash the like button if you do. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to understand, hey, wait a minute. This is about the words and the understanding. It is not about AI, not AI. But that does come into play. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at different things that will help us in the AI process. Now, what I would recommend doing is take your AI article. So if you have content on your website, this is how you want to fix it, okay? So I'm gonna pull up some content that we have here and uh, we'll use an example of content from our content uh, business, okay? So let's say we wanna do this one here, okay? Uh, I don't think that's it, this is it. Okay, so we have this on how to check your credit score. All right, so let's take a look at this content. So if I take this here, and we do a scan on the content as is, this was written human-directed AI, okay? So our goal is, are we going to fit it? 
Okay, so we go through and we say someone searching for how to check your credit store is looking for information on how to access. So here's what they want, right? We start our content with what does someone want? Okay, now you can include this or not include it. I usually don't. This is just for you to understand. Now, when we go through how to check your credit score, a step-by-step -step guide. So what we're looking at is, okay, here's our title. That does fit. Now, if I just have AI do the, the thing, it's, it's not going to fit, okay? Understanding credit score vital for this. Check regular review. Okay, so we have some quick tips. That is good. Understanding, okay, here's how to understand what is on it. Now, how many of you guys look at this and you're like, okay, I get it. I, I, a lot of sites would just be like, well, go to Credit Karma and check your credit score. This is actually going into how to understand why it's good to do regular. Now, I would actually... So let's give this the treatment, okay? So here we have the different sites. So let's go through here. We'll take the article starting at the title. So this is the actual meat and potatoes of the article. Let's put this in the AI generator and scan it. Let's see what comes up, because this was 100% typed by AI, but directed by humans. So let's, let's put this in, and let's see exactly what's going on here, okay? So right here, we'll do a scan, okay? We're also gonna put this in our uh, editor here. We're gonna edit right here in the tool so we can see how to do this, okay? And we're gonna show you guys some things that will work in a very simple way. Now we have this. Okay, how to check your credit score step by step. So we're seeing 100% AI, which is interesting. I'm gonna say it's probably not that high, but let's go ahead and do this in a plagiarism checker as well. I like to use Grammarly, okay? And we're gonna have multiple tools open and show you guys how this works, okay? So plagiarism should be less than 3%, somewhere around there, because sometimes, you know, like, hi, how are you? Obviously, that's gonna be flagged as plagiarized because that is on the web. And this might get a 100% score because it's probably on someone's website by now, but showing you guys how this works and understanding it. So when we go through, we're gonna look at different prompts so we have, yeah, so it's showing, it is showing the site that it actually is on. But we want to go through and clear up the plagiarism because a lot of times AI will have a high plagiarism score. And you want to make sure that this does not flag a lot of stuff, okay? If you're seeing a lot of financial sites, see how this is not so much financial, which means this article has provided you with, it, that's not, that's not like financial credit stuff. That is more or less just words, okay? So looking at the plagiarism is, is key as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to try to test this in an interesting way. So how to check your credit score, a step-by-step -step guide, was flagged, okay? So what if we do something like, let's give it a persona prompt, okay? How, let's see, how do we edit this? Go here. We might have to open a new one. Let's see. Okay, so we'll go in here, and we will do enable editing, and we're going to do something like how to check your credit score, a step-by-step -step guide. Okay? Seven ways I check my credit score free. Now, again, most of us have checked our credit score before, so if you've used seven sites, put seven. If you've used three, three ways I check my credit score free, okay? So using that can do good. So let's go and do a new scan, and we're just gonna start over like this. Three ways I check my credit score free. Okay, great. Um, then we can go through and do the next bit. So now we'll go through and say, okay, understanding your credit score. Now, when I go through and do this, I can actually use AI and chat GPT, chat GPT over here, and I can have this change it based on a series of prompts. So we'll go new, I'll put my text in like this, introduction, understanding. Now I find that the easiest, best way to do this is using your own knowledge. So if you've checked your credit score, you've had an issue on there, whatever it is, we're gonna look at that and understand, okay, this is how it works works okay so now we'll go through and say now please rewrite this rewrite this using persona 
talking in the first person. Personal experience, perplexity, and burstiness. Okay, and it should go through and change it. But again, you want to make sure that you're reading it. Okay, very, very, very important. So now it's the first time I ventured into the labyrinth and my financial help. I felt like it was decoding a secret language. It dawned on me how crucial understanding my credit score truly was. So it's a bit fluffy. Now please remove some of the fluff. Okay, so let's go through and see how this works. Very important. Okay, so now we have this here. When I first, this is much better, right? This makes more sense other than like, on my journey to the credit repair site, on my flying unicorn, I hath stumbled upon the, I mean, we don't want that kind of stuff. It doesn't make any sense, right? So we're going to go through like this and just kind of rewrite it and rework it. Now, spending four to 10 minutes per article should get you somewhere. So let's go like this and scan it, it'll probably still have some AI score. Let's do this one as well, because again, that's not the be all end all. Now this one is saying 98%. So now we're getting somewhere. This one's saying 100%, which is interesting. I'll bet if we checked it enough times, it would probably drop down. That is what I'm seeing. Now, again, I mean, looking at what's going to happen here and looking at, okay, how can I add my own personal stuff? If I wanted to go through and rewrite this, well, AI has already done a good job. So I could say three ways I checked my credit score free when I was looking at checking my credit score. I wanted to do this to understand my financial health. Um, I needed to know where I stood when it came to renting an apartment, getting a credit card, and even getting a loan. This was important. And going through like this and rewriting each one is what's really going to help. And I don't know if we have enough words here to check it, but let's see here. And again, this, it doesn't matter what this tool says because this is 100% uh, human written. I just read, the, I wrote this um, in a human way. So let's see if it has enough here. Should flag as 100%. If not, the tool's kind of weird, which I mean, it usually does. So now we're seeing, yes, that little 20 seconds of rewriting it in my own words helped. Now, am I saying go get AI content and just reword it? Yes and no. Reword it, think about it, and make it better. Now, when we go through, we want to look at an entire overview of how this stuff works. I will show you guys one that uh, we did, I think it was last week in um, Blog Profit Network. We went through and we had our uh, humanized AI content training, big long webinar and notes and all kinds of stuff. Right, And you can see this is the notes that we use when we create our AI content. Now you might be saying, but Marcus, this seems like a lot of work, and yes it is. Do you want to make money or do you want to push a button and make money for five minutes and make the search engines mad? Right, Looking at that stuff is important. So this is what I would definitely look at, and if you're not in Blog Profit Network, definitely go in there, watch this video. It is an absolute game changer. I'll show you what it looks like on the uh, site here. Um, because it is, it's a very, very strategic training that went through and, and had all the stuff that you need to rank your content and make it good. What we're going to look at is understanding our audience. When I rewrite this, it's not that hard to do. I could keep going and say, okay, uh, what's the second part? Okay, next, I needed to find sites that were going to help me, but I didn't want to pay a lot. And I wanted real up-to-date info. I found that Experian and TransUnion reported things differently. Thus, this is what I wanted to look at. And you can start to understand different stuff that's out there. Again, take the time. Go through and look up the keyword you want. So if you're going for the keyword of um, how to check your credit score, okay? Uh, let's see, where was it? How to check your credit score. Look at Google 
and see what actually shows up. The titles will tell you a lot. And there's actually a really good um, tool that we have over at the Profit Scoop. Let me show you a little trick. Okay, scroll down to about 20 or 30 results. Okay, when you get your 20 or 30 results, what you're going to do is you're going to copy it. Okay, this is a hack that we'll teach you. It works really, really well. Okay, we're going to go over to theprofitscoop.com and we're going to go to the content profit extractor. Very important. We're going to click this. We're going to paste that info that we just copied. There we go. We're going to extract the titles and the URL. The URL isn't so important. We're going to download this as an Excel file right like this. Watch how easy this is and how simple it is. Now what we're seeing is, OK, these are the titles that are actually working. All right, so now we have all these titles that are working. Okay, we can notice trends. We can see exactly what's going on, and we can take these and say, great, now use this list to come up with a good title for my article. Now, notice how what we're doing is we are working alongside AI. AI is our friend. AI is helping us. AI is not going to do all the work based on just a bunch of keywords and a bunch of random stuff. We need to be taking the time and focusing on exactly what people want. And we're seeing here, empower your financial security, a simple guide to assessing. So I would do just this, simple guide to assessing and understanding your credit score, right? And as we go through, again, taking a look at this and saying, okay, let's build this article from the ground up. And I would think with an article like this, I mean, we're doing this with a training, so there's a lot going on here. I can probably rewrite this in a very simple way. Right? I could go through and say, okay, um, now make this more human. Make this sound more human, please, using the human prompts and sentence variations, right? And I'll show you some of these in just a minute. They're actually very easy to use. All you need to do is understand how it's working. But again, reworking a piece of content is key because if you lost in the rankings and you're using AI, again, I don't think it's AI that got you flagged. I think what's getting you flagged is not helpful content and spamming. And a lot of the spamming is going through and like, okay, Am I actually delivering on the promise? And what you're going to find is that a lot of the rankings that are out there are still using AI. Some don't. Um, and like Ed says, many of the top ones could be human. It could be non-human. Again, we're looking at those. Like I know a lot of uh, heat was on BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed was um, one that got hit big time in the AI um, hit. So if we were to look at this, we're looking at 30 days change. They gained rankings. So they did like fall a little, but then they gained. So it's looking like it's probably recovering. And a lot of their stuff is in fact AI, which is interesting. So if we were to look at some of their top uh, pages, top keywords, you're going to see, okay, here's some quizzes, some things like that. Um, interesting things where it's like, okay, this is cool. This is working. Very simple, very easy. Again, looking at all these other ones where, okay, here's one that's you know, looking at uh, churches and, and travel and different things like that where we're seeing, hey, these are still working, okay? Now again, taking a look at this and saying, how can I make this good? Here's one here, rewritten. Let's put this into Grammarly because obviously we always wanna check for plagiarism. There it goes there. We'll put it in this one. Again, this is 100% AI written. This is showing 89% human. A lot of times, um, now let's talk about the little number that seems to pop up everywhere while you're adulting. Your daunting credit score, right? Do the little things like this will boost this up. Taking the time to rework the content. So if you have AI content, and it got hit, try it with a few. Try to make good stuff. Look at your site as a whole. Look at how can I be helpful to whatever keywords I'm trying to rank for in a good way. 
right? How do I go out there and say, okay, if someone's looking for their credit score, how do I make the best article ever for that? And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the different phases. First, pre-writing. Understand your audience, set your persona, fact gathering, outline creation. This is where we're going to go in and we're going to use AI. So I could say, okay, let, let's rework this. Let's write a human article on how to check your credit score. Write as if you are a 40-year-old with bad credit and you struggled to get loans or whatever it is, right? And it's going to go through and it's going to make it work. Um, Jill says, how long after posting do you wait or ignore until Google hits it? So what you're going to do is look at your content, look at why things went down, why things went bad. My advice would be take your old top performing content. If you had stuff that was doing really good six months ago, go through, look at it, say, okay, well, and, and look at it honestly. Would it be good if I read it? If I went and looked at your content, would it be something that would be helpful to me? Yes, no, that's what you have to look at. Then we're going to go through and we're going to understand why people are looking this stuff up. Again, straight out of AI like this is going to almost always trigger some kind of AI flag. Again, I don't know if that's the be all end all. I think reworking it, if you want a zero uh, AI like that, there we go. This is using the most rigorous AI tool and we're at 46%. That's pretty darn good with one little 30 second hack. Now we're gonna go through and say, now please make an outline for this article and we're gonna work backwards and make it work in a simple, simple way. Um, African Flight Star says, this gets kind of confusing, AI, not AI, maybe AI if this or that looks like AI. Okay, good, that's the thing. That's why I said at the beginning of this training, most people are focusing on the wrong thing. Focusing on the wrong thing. AI, not AI, that's the wrong question. Helpful, not helpful, that's the right question. Now, looking at this, if I can go through and you're seeing in minutes, we are able to change this and make it work really good. Add your own personal stuff. What AI is doing is it's going and doing the dirty work of finding the information, outlining it in a simple way, gathering from different sources, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write it in a way that makes sense based on my experience, okay? Very important. So now we're like, okay, pay your bills on time, blah, 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 blah. Again, what do you guys notice about this? I said, write a article about how to check your credit score. The only part that fits is this. Now the interpreting is okay. So what we wanna do is visualize it. What would work? What would work? Well, I'm thinking maybe something like, to check your credit score, these are the five things you need to look for and understand. But first, we need to teach them where to go check their score, right? So understanding that as a whole is key. Now, if you don't know it, what is the intent of someone looking up how to check my credit score? Now, I will say how to check my credit score. Most people watching this training will never rank for that. I've been doing this a long time. I don't think I can rank for it. But looking at this as a whole and understanding, okay, here's what they want. Now let's start to write it. And taking your time with AI is key. Again, if you just go in and start rewriting it like this, if I would think that once you get good at it, you could probably do this in about four minutes per article, rework it, make it human, bada bing, bada boom. The easiest way to make it human is to write it humanly, right? If I go through and I get the bare bones like this, okay, good. So here's what they want. Excellent. Now please write an outline on this topic with bullet points and numbers and facts and places they can check their credit. 
okay? It's gonna go through and it's gonna make this work in a very, very simple way, okay? So now we're looking at this, and now we're seeing exactly what's going on. And I can go through and I can, I can start doing this. So brief, briefly explain the importance of knowing your credit score. So now I'll go through, once this is done, okay? We wait and wait. This is the longest part. If you guys enjoy this, smash the like button. I woke up on the wrong side today. I, I don't know, man, I was dizzy today. So I'm trying to do the best I can. All right, so now we're gonna go through and say, now please start here. Briefly explain the importance of knowing your credit score. So now we can start here and make this work in a very simple way, loan and credit approval, and we can rewrite write this in a very simple way. Now, another thing you can do is you can ask it to talk like someone. Now, please write like Billy Mays. Okay. The way he talks. And what will happen is there's little tricks and hacks you can do to make this work. A lot of people, they go through, and uh, this is something that we struggled with with our content business. In the beginning, some of the content people were adding weird characters. Like they would add the weird, I think it's like a Greek A. Let me see if I can find it. Greek letter A. It was like this weird, yeah, this one. So they would use this A. Watch, and this is something that's completely stupid, but this is, this is the kind of stuff you're gonna see a lot of the people teach, which is not good. So like this here, hey there, Billy Mays, whatever. All right, this'll probably get flagged as, as AI because it was, okay, it might not be 100% because it's Billy Mays, and I mean, we all like the old Billy Mays. That dude knew how to sell. But looking at this, we're gonna understand, okay, so we're at 51%. Now watch, put this little A, now, please replace all the A's with that A. It'll go through and it'll replace it. Now, again, this is a kind of stupid stuff that will trick it, but at the end, it's like, is it really tricking anyone? Is it really helping? I mean, we all know that's not an A. It does look like an A. It took me a minute to figure out uh, what they were doing, and then we promptly corrected that um, and, and we looked at it and like, okay, here's what's going on. And so we're like this here, okay? And watch, this will probably get non-AI because of that stupid little thing. That, that's it, right? It's like, okay, here's a little trick and a hack that'll work and now we're probably 100% AI because of some stupid thing. Um, and you'll probably see it over here too, boom. Let's see how it does, right? So 60% there. Um, but looking at it, it's like, okay, are these really helpful? No, that's not helpful. That's stupid. It doesn't trick anyone. It's like the old days when you would do keyword stuffing and, and garbage like that. What we want to do is we want to stick to the things that actually work. Again, I'm going to have notes over at Download My Notes that will go through this. You guys can see here uh, we have a little checklist over here. Where's our checklist? Up here. Our checklist here which is showing you how to rewrite the content, right? Again, I look at lots of data. I understand a lot of this stuff. Knowing what's going on and knowing what to do is gonna be key. Here's the key, okay? If you want to do this, focus on good content, AI or not AI. Forget about the AI score for now, okay? You can worry about it later. I want you to focus on a good piece of content. Why? Because a good piece of content will make money on its own. I want you to have a piece of content that is so good, whether it's simple, whether it's complicated, does not matter. What matters is, is it a good, helpful thing? Like for me, I've been cooking hamburgers for a long time. We have a, a student of mine who we were doing content for about hamburgers, and we did a Pinterest treatment, okay? And the Pinterest treatment, we wanted to go through and show him um, different things, right? So like. I think, let me see if I have the one here. There was one we did where it was like tips on how to barbecue. And we would do like, you know, little tips like this. Barbecue fixes, keep a spray bottle filled with water and, or let's see, let me change the screen. Um, like this here. Uh, come on now. Okay, hold on one second. Let me fix this. 
I've got too many screens open. Okay, so this is what it looked like here. Um, and it was something simple. Keep a spray bottle to tame the flare-ups. Uh, we had some others that were like um, copycat burgers, the best tools to use. Something that stands the test of time. What we want is we want our content to be something people would want. Like even if they weren't searching for how do I check my credit score, would someone, inter be inter would someone interested in credit be interested in reading this? That's where it comes through and we look at this, right? Google is getting smarter. They're understanding the nature of the keyword rather than just syntax of X plus Y equals Z. They're looking at the syntax, they're understanding. So we wanna look at number one, um, knowing your audience, okay? Understand who you're writing for. Demographics, interest, conversational tone. All right, are we writing in a, a level that works? I remember when I first started learning marketing, they said, write at a sixth grade level. And I'm like, great, I probably write at that anyway. And that's about all, all I can do. Um, and you know, AI is writing at like a college professor level. Okay, this isn't gonna fit your market. AI is not gonna work, we need to be uh, simplified. Being authentic, talk about on it, hey, you know, I haven't tested every credit score site, but this is the one I did test and I happen to like it. I didn't test every vacuum, but here are the struggles I have when vacuuming. It doesn't necessarily need to be some dissertation on the best vacuum, just talk about the pain points, be real, give good information, very important. Uh, simple language, AI, does everything but simple language, right? Some of this stuff is like, oh my gosh, I don't, like burstiness, what the heck is that? That's the first time I ever heard that word. I didn't know there was a word for like short sentences. I just called it like, <laughs> I write like a, a guy who doesn't know how to write, that's how I write. Um, and looking at that, that's how humans write. How do we make this work? And again, do people want to read this insanely complicated stuff? They don't. They don't, right? Like here, you guys are watching this and you don't want something, you know, super complex. Tell stories and examples. There you go. Notice how at the beginning of this training, I talked about the story of the guy who tested UL products and how that relates. Go through your arsenal of things you've done because we've all done stuff and look at what works. Oh, when I was riding my bike, here's what happened. Like the other day, this guy was texting and drove on the, in the bike lane on my side of the road. Like he was on the wrong side and I had to yell at him because, you know, you shouldn't be texting, you should be driving, not running people over. That's a story people can relate to. AI often is unrelatable because it doesn't have those things, okay? Uh, simple language, tell stories, use examples, ask questions. Hey, what do you think about this? Get engagement, empathy and understanding, right? We can go through and you can start to use some of these and I'll give you some prompts as well. Now add some persona and empathy and understanding. Let's see how it does, okay? And it's still using the A, but we'll fix that later. Let me tell you, understanding your credit score is more than just numbers, okay? So now we're seeing that the empathy and understanding is in fact helping. Let's see how this fares up with this here. And again, what you wanna do with AI is walk it down the line. Okay, walk it down. Hey, this is this, let's redo this part. Let's redo this part. Let's make it make sense. Not just trying to pass the test, but actually going through and making this work in a real world way. Um, super important because now that I have this, it's a lot easier to do. Now, one of the things I actually was toying with the idea of, let me know what you guys think of this. I was thinking about um, the way that I talk, which is, you know, probably like, an uneducated person. But uh, I was thinking about the way I talk and I'm like, well, what if I fed AI a bunch of my emails that I had written as a baseline for having it write like me, right? And I could go through and find an email that I wrote. Let's see if I can find something I wrote, maybe um, on my blog, let's say that domain one that I wrote uh, right here. So let's say I take this and I give this as an example. Giving AI examples is great because then it's gonna know what to do. So we could say, 
Okay, let's start over and forget about the A or whatever. Or you know what, let's do this. Please read this article. Notice the way I type and talk. Okay, so it's gonna go through and it's gonna do the way I write, the way I talk, blah, 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 okay? And by the way, this article is in fact ranking um, and, and doing pretty well. We're getting some traffic for it. I've actually noticed um, a lot of these are getting picked up really good just by reworking it. And I am using, um, I'm using AI to help me write content because there's no way I could write the amount of content that we're putting out. And even like looking at uh, the Pinterest example, right? Looking at that and understanding, okay, how are these actually working? And I wanna give you guys an example because when you look at this, understanding the nature of content is everything, right? Understanding that is key. And so this is one that I did for a, um, a content, it was a, show in folder, extract, I think, is it gonna work? Okay, well, I'll have to find that in a minute. They did a RAR file instead of a zip. Um, but yeah, going through and looking at that and saying, okay, how do I make this work in a super simple way, you know, that's what's gonna help. And understanding, hey, this is where the rubber meets the road is understanding how content works. So now we're looking at the way I talk. Now, noting the way I speak, please write in my style how to check your credit report article, right? And this should do a good job, right, like this. Make a Marcus email GPT. And we're getting there. Yeah, we, we'll probably get there. But yeah, looking at the way that these work is super, super important because we were actually doing um, a candle site like this. And we're like, okay, how do I make content for Pinterest that stands on its own? Like if someone saw this, candle color meanings, candle scents, how to make floating candles, these kind of things, it's content that will stand on its own. Whether it's Pinterest, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Google, uh, SEO, whatever it is, is super important. So now this is doing a job of, of making this sound like me. Let's see how it fares. Okay, and again, as long as we're getting somewhere, that's the key. Um, and looking at writer, Let's see how this one does. So this is writing like me, 90%. Again, a couple little tweaks and we could probably get this in the 98, 100% range. Over here, we're seeing a 68%, uh, okay? And you can even do something like, now please make it fifth grade reading level and vary the sentence size and punctuation, right? A lot of this is where um, AI varies is, okay, how is it gonna be in, in the different levels and different things like that? Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so now we'll do this. Now please make it fifth grade. And what's gonna happen here is like, okay, well your credit report, shiny brighter. And some of it doesn't make sense. Like, this is just stupid. It doesn't, it doesn't what? has nothing to do with what I want. I would actually do better with like a grid, okay? So like the best content in my opinion would be start with a Pinterest pin. I'm gonna say, please make a table of the top things on a credit score and how much they impact your score. Talk about how to check your credit score this is gonna do a good job because now you have a grid, right? Does that make sense? Is 98 to 100% what Google passes? No, Google has not come out and said how much AI is appropriate. They have said they don't want spam and they don't want unhelpful content. But the fact that they have AI in their search engine means that they do value AI results. The fact that they're training their AI on Reddit means they do value it. So here we see this here. And this will probably, usually I find that tables pass the test, 
Some do, some don't. Let's see if we could. Okay, it's not going to let us do that there. Let's try in here. It should keep the table look, but, you know, who knows. 87 there. And over here, 100%. So tables do usually hit a good amount, right? And a table is helpful. Like think about it in terms of like, wait a minute, I am a content marketer. I am not trying to just get a ranking for a ranking's sake. I'm trying to make content that will be helpful to people. So what if I think about this in a different way? Things that will affect your credit score. What would this look like? Um, how to check it, okay? Now, please have the top 10 sites to check free with prices, trials, what reporting agencies, ECT. This will go through. And what's happening is this is doing the work for me. This is the hard part. Writing it in a fluffy, funny way is, is not the hard part. Right? We just need to dumb it down to whatever everyone's gonna gonna want. Um, and so now we're looking at this. Make it a table, please. And we're gonna go through and utilize this stuff. This is the hard part. This is the stuff that I I is difficult to do. Having these things here, understanding, okay, this stuff is the hard part. Coming up with the overall content is what the hard part is. Now, when it comes to being unique, the key in being unique, and this is probably, I'm gonna say when it comes to Google and ranking, what I'm seeing, unique is it. They don't, like, why would Google rank you when the top 10 sites already have the stuff that you say? Why? Why would they care, right? They're gonna care because you bring something unique. Okay, what is unique? Well, ladies and gentlemen, all these sites we looked at, all these sites that we ran through the profit scoop and got the titles for, none of these talk about the scammy junk sites. I mean, we all know there are free credit report sites that are complete junk phishing garbage. Nobody talks about that. All right, let's go through. There we have that. Now please share some of the credit reporting sites that are shady or scams. Now think about this, wait a minute. So now if I was at the top of Google, we need to think about who's gonna click because what tells Google people like your site is that they click on it. So if I say, um, here's how to check your credit score plus a warning, 10 sites that are going to take your money or whatever, that's something that now adds a uniqueness that none of those other sites have. How many of you guys got that? Type, aha, smash a like button if you got that. You're not going to get that with just AI alone. You're going to get that by thinking. I didn't think of that. I thought of it because I'm like, oh, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, here's something that can work, okay? What are some sites in the news that were like this? Okay, and it'll go through. It'll find, oh, hey, here's this Experian breach. Here's this other thing. Here's this, that, and the other. Okay, very important. To avoid scams while checking your credit score. There, now we got something that's, that's workable. How many of you guys are getting this? And now we're like, okay, now I have something different and unique. This is going to work. And even if it doesn't rank on Google, it is something that will stand the test of time. If I put this on Facebook, people would be like, oh, whoa, dude, I, I check my credit all the time. Right? We want to have something that is of value. Um, now, utilizing this, you can probably prompt it. Let's say, um, what are some negative titles that can be used for how to check your credit score. Let's see if it comes up with it, because if we can do that, then it'll, it'll kind of help us as well. 
the pitfalls of checking your score, what you need to watch out for, checking, avoid these common blunders, dark side of that, I like that, I like that. I would also have like the dark, how to check your credit score, the dark side exposed or something like that. Um, these are actually pretty decent and they are gonna get, they're gonna stand out, right? When we look at the majority, how can I, how can I get a free copy? There's a bunch of junk here. It's good, it's ranking. These are making a lot of money, but how can we do better? Five easy options for checking your credit score, um, annual credit, check your score. I like the danger angle and that's something that would probably work really well, okay? Jill, can you scrape and then ask G GPT what's unique? That's miss you could, yeah, I mean, let's try it. Let's try like this, we'll take the top 47. Great, and what is missing from these that could be helpful? And it should do a good job, I don't know why it pasted it like that, but let's see here. And it should do a good job of going through and looking at it and understanding, okay, how can I do this? Spend some time on your title, like your title is everything. If you get the title wrong, AI is going to go in the wrong direction. It ain't going to matter if it's um, passing the test or not. I mean, it's like Tommy Boy says, you know, if you have a, a, a guarantee, a guarantee doesn't mean anything. That just means all they sold you was a guaranteed POS, right? Um, having a junky POS article that passes AI is not getting anyone anywhere. Right, they, they will eventually catch up with it and they'll be like, hey, this is junk, this is not fitting, it's not good. Um, so we're going through and we're like, okay, this is smirking. Cool, so now we have stuff like this. Now make 20 sample titles, okay? How would you flip the market and get as good a rank as possible? So flipping the market and getting a good rank are two different things. Uh, flipping the market would be finding people that are searching for this stuff but don't know they want a credit report. Um, getting a good rank is, is getting a good, so those two things don't go together. Okay, so now we're looking at this. Interactive tools for healthy credit before you apply for a loan, maximizing your credit score. So a lot of this will help debunked, that's a good one, I like that. Um, how to check your credit score, credit score myths debunked, I like that. Um, and now going there, that's going to direct your content, right, that's everything. Because if you get that wrong, then your article is gonna go in the wrong direction. And if we go here and say, let's make an outline for an article on Credit score myths debunked. Now it's gonna go in a completely different direction. Do you guys see how that works? And that's something that I think Google would probably value over just the standard similar stuff. And you can go through and see what's coming up, like how to check my credit score. You can look at these, okay, you have a lot of ads. Um, where can I get my credit scores? Okay, so there's a where. Uh, how can I check them? And you can look at the content and see if, it's, if there's anything I can add to it. And there is. Notice how this is actually a pretty short piece of content. This is nothing huge, very simple. Um, you got Quora and Reddit. People want actual person uh, responses. Credit Karma, Experian, CNBC. So how to understand and check your credit score free. October 2023. So this could be AI. Let's take a look. And a lot of these top rankings do flag as AI, which is interesting. Uh, do we always start with the title first to get the content angle? Yes. Okay, so that's showing human. Let's see what it shows here. But you will find that often there's a lot of AI content that still does rank. But again, looking at this, types of credit scores, how are they calculated? This is a pretty helpful article. I would say that the user experience isn't that great with all this other junk, but it does have a good piece of content. Check your credit score free with Credit Journey. That's an ad. Um, I mean, it's an ad type content, it's not an actual ad. 
let's see here, um, Investopedia, getting your credit score from a bank, that's interesting, so how to get it free, how to get your credit score free without personal info or something like that, um, that can work, okay, so that there, like common loophole to get a safe credit score or something like that, that could work. Do the current LLMs hold the ability once trained to converse like you, or is that an ML project? So this is all just the tools that you can use. It's all in knowing how to talk to them and knowing what you're wanting. Um, Sayak, I would always start with your title because that's gonna direct the content. Much like here on YouTube, when you're gonna create a video, start with your title and thumbnail first. That's gonna direct what they're doing because if the title doesn't match the content, they're not gonna keep reading. And if the title isn't good, they're not gonna click and read in the first place. We need to get them to click and we need to get them to read. And we need to get them what they want up front really quick. And you can add some stuff like personal experience or whatever. And looking at like, okay, how do we add, how do we build, and what do we do? And there's some prompts you can use as well. Uh, breaking it up, short paragraphs, be concise, use an active voice. So let's see, using an active voice. Let's try this here. Uh, let's go back here. Now please write an article about this using an active voice, okay? And let's see um, how this works and if it helps with the, uh, the checkers. But again, reworking your content. This is something I've been talking about for years, right? A lot of people, they just sit there and they're like, oh, well, my content didn't rank. I'm going to go on to the next garbage idea that people talk about and try to do that. No, no, no. Focus on good stuff. It, it doesn't take that long to make a good piece of content um, on something that, that's valuable, right? So looking at that and saying, okay, well, maybe when I go into my niche, maybe it should be something I'm actually interested in. Um, here we have this. Let's see. Okay, so that one does show up, but again, is it helpful? Probably not, and I think there's a bunch of fluff in there. So looking at this and understanding, okay, line by line generation, go through, have an FAQ, fact check it, make it work, very, very simple. And you start to realize, hey, this is stuff that actually works and stands the test of time if you're willing to do it, okay? Very cool. Let's remove this guy because we don't want to eat it in the advertiser stuff. Okay, um, have a disclosure, go through, look at it. Now, here's some prompts you can use. Okay, and again, we'll have these at downloadmynotes.com. Can you infuse some personal antidotes into the article? Let's see what happens when it does this. Okay. My journey to master the elusive all I stumbled on golden ticket, a website offering free, blah, blah, blah. Okay, interesting. So it's actually not bad. It is talking about the scams and stuff like that. So this is something that now I can reword and probably work uh, really well. Let's see here. And again, everyone's had experience with credit stuff, so there you go, okay? Is using AI-generated images a strike against the whole content of your website? I have not found that to be the case. In fact, I have found like some of these things are ranking at the top um, and they are AI generated. So, you know, looking at that, like this one here, I believe, um, yeah, this one here is ranking and it is flagging, I believe it, if, if this is the right one, there was one that was flagging like 100%, um, but they are off the charts with it. So it just depends on what it is you're trying to accomplish. Again. I would focus more on um, actually make it. So it's 100% AI content, it's ranking on Google for a word. Is that to say, just go out and put 100% AI content? No, that's not what we wanna do. We wanna make good quality stuff based on what people are searching for. And utilizing these different tools, it can help you. But what I would do is I would start to use these with the stuff that you're doing, right? So how can I add humor? or cultural references, or emotion. How can I make this work in a simple way? Again, looking at, um, in Blog Profit Network, when you watch that video, watch that video, again, you can go to blogprofitnetwork.com to sign up, 
um, we have the checklist, but we have it based on intent, right? What is the intent of someone searching for X, Y, and Z, okay? What is the intent of it? And that is really uh, the key, right? Going through and uh, making that work. There you go. Okay, so now we're looking at it and we're like, okay, uh, educational, what is it, health? financial, and this is where we're seeing a lot of the changes, and this is where things are going to um, look at that. What I have found is that AI titles stand out like a sore thumb. Like if you're just doing AI to get your title, it's going to stand out. I want to add to it, make it better. Um, going through and looking at the intent. Okay, if they're infor informational, what's it going to look like? How do we add more stuff? How do we make more things? Um, looking at navigational. Okay, so the how to check the credit score is informational, but it's also navigational, as we saw from the Google results, right? The navigation of here are the top sites, here's where to go. Some of them are just websites, right? Starting to understand that all of these things fit together. Uh, commercial, transactional, are they looking to buy something? A lot of transactional ones you're going to see are what we're seeing on like uh, the J post, right? They're looking for these products and their ranking. And a lot of the rankings are straight up um, AI, right? So here's another one. Is that to say we should just use AI and just copy it right out of the get-go? Of course not. That's junk. In my opinion, the JPost content is, is junk. It is not fitting what the user actually wants when it comes to Googling a product. It's not fitting that. It's just junk regurgitated about the product rather than uh, going the other way. Now, we're seeing that this one here is actually showing human content, which is interesting, right? It pretty much guaranteed that was probably an AI written content. So looking at it, I think our overall is using AI to help us do the dirty work of finding the content, structuring it, because a lot of us are not writers. If it can structure it and make it work, or maybe I can buy AI content from places that sell it or use content at scale, then rework it and say, okay, how can I spend four to 10 minutes on this article, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on what it is. Because if you rank for a good keyword and it can make a dollar a day, would you not spend a couple hours to turn that piece of content into $300 a year? I mean, I would, right? Or maybe you can get it up to $3 a day, $1,000, right? We need to start looking at this as part of our business rather than just trying to game the system and put as much AI content as possible. That's not what we want to do. Can this help us as affiliate marketers to scale? Absolutely. I could go out and I can take a look at all the different reviews about a product, go get the product, review it myself, talk about it, and bada bing, bada boom, there we go, right? But looking at that and saying, okay, well, maybe, maybe I can have it do um, a checklist. What is a good checklist? Please be thorough for a vacuum review article, right? And we start to look at this. And actually, a vacuum review site was one I used for this example to show how it works. Very simple, OK? So now we got overview, model, and brand name, purpose of review, types vacuum. Now. Please add a part where we talk about what other people are saying. Make an outline for this. And then we can go through, and it'll do the work. Like, it'll say, oh, hey, this vacuum has the, you know, HEPA filter or whatever. And it'll do a lot of that work for us. And then, you know, you could talk about your va how does my vacuum compare against these or whatever it is. Um, here you got like dustbin, battery life. And this is based on things people have said in reviews. And I just found a, a couple of channels that were literally reading other people's reviews, much like the channels here that read stuff on Reddit. Um, you know, value is something that's interesting. A lot of gurus talk about value but they don't know value from a hole in the wall because value could be something completely different to you than to me. And it has to do with the intent. Like to me, um, I watch, you know, people watch certain social media people. I can't stand it. Like I don't get it. It's like I, I would never watch that. 
It's not funny, but to other people it is. And understanding that there is that line between they don't just want content, they want it structured in a different way. And as I've said for my entire career of doing this, content structured differently can make you rich. Now we can say, now please add in a part where we talk about what people are saying, make an outline for this. Now going through, I can say, now please do this on, I think I had some keywords here for the Dyson one. Yeah, here we go, this one here, uh, Roomba, eight, eight, Roomba 760. Okay, and what'll happen is now it's gonna do the overview like this. We'll wait for it to finish, drink some more coffee. I, I only got three cups of coffee here and you need a few more. And now we're starting to see what it thinks is good. And now we have like, okay, value for money. This is good. Now we're having like a place where we can start and understand, oh, hey, this is where the rubber meets the road, okay? And we'll wait for this to be finished. How many guys are digging this? Smash a like button if you are. I think we went in a little different direction, but I think it is uh, definitely helpful in understanding, hey, this is how content works, right? It's not just about AI making a bunch of content. It's about really, really focusing on what people want. Okay, so now we got final thoughts. So now we have our outline, which is good. Now please do this on the room of 760. Now it's going to do that, and now we can add our own stuff. And how many of you guys want some homework to do, if you guys have been following me a while? Smash that like button if you want some homework. And I think our, where did our chat box go? I can't even see what people are saying. Where did we go? Um, if you guys do want homework, what I want you to do is I want you to do this on a product, right? Go out there, find a product. If you have a vacuum, do a vacuum. If it's something you bought recently, do it on something you bought recently. I know just recently we bought all kinds of stuff for here. Um, do that. Have AI write the content, then go through and put your touch on it based on your experience on the content or, or on, the, on the product, right? So you'd be like, oh, hey, do this for this. Um, and now let's go here. Let's do, um, let's say, where did we start? And I'll rework one of these. I think we have a little bit of time. I'll try to do this for you. I'm going to do for a webcam uh, review article. Hopefully, it doesn't think we're talking about webcam other stuff. Hopefully, it gets it. Um, let's see, creating, we're reviewing a webcam. Good. Okay, so now it's going to go through, and it's going to do this, and I'll show you how to work it. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll do this for, I think these are called the Obspot 2K or something like that, or Obspot 2. Now, please fill this in for the Obspot, OBS Spot uh, 2, Tiny 2, I think it's called. Which, by the way, those are great webcams. That's what I'm using on this. The other two at the board and stuff are actual um, other stuff. Joe's going to review the Callahan brake pads. There you go. It's got to have a guarantee on the box. So now we have this here, and I can have it fill it in for the Obspot 2. And then I can rework it based on what I know. So powered tracking, unboxing. See, now it's, it's doing a lot of the work, so I could go through now that I know this product and I can probably less than 10 minutes spice this up to be pretty good. Um, I don't know if this will be straight up flagged AI right out of the get-go, but it's not going to matter because I'm going to rework it anyway. And let me give you a little hint. A little tip to do this would be start with the AI content. You can put that on your website and go back and, and tweak it later. Um, let's see how this one fared, because this is straight AI, so that shows straight there. On this one, we're showing 87. Um, you know, let's try something interesting. Please write the most AI-sounding possible article about vacuums. 500 words, 
make it 100% AI-ish. Let's see if this actually flags. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, but that's what's going to work. So Tony says review of an air fryer. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing where, like, I don't get it. People will spend thousands of dollars on, you know, uh, silly products that they're never going to use, but like guru stuff, but they'll never go and get a product and actually review it. Like, they, they just don't do it. Um, so here's one that is, like, straight up AI. Let's see if this flags. So this is AI to the core. And let's see here. And then we'll put it in this one. So 75% on the biggest one, okay? Very, very cool. Um, and then this one showing 100%. So now going back to this webcam review, it filled it in. And now all I need to do is add my stuff. And I can add images and different things like that. So the key is looking at how I can make this work. Life says copy leaks is an interesting tool. I'm finding that copy leaks is it gives a lot of false positives, right? Like it pretty much flags everything as AI, even, um, you know, stuff that's not. So it's kind of interesting. And then sometimes it'll flag it and then it'll, it'll go back on it. And it'll say, oh, no, I, it's not really flagged. Um, so looking at that is, is key to um, understanding, okay, it's not just about the uh, AI thing. Yeah, zero GPT is pretty good. But again, looking at these in terms of, you know, um, is this the be all end all? Let's see, 51%, and it's showing what they are. So when you look at these and it shows what they are, that's helpful because then you can go and you can rework that part and focus on that part, uh, which is cool. All right, so hopefully this was helpful for you guys understanding AI content. If you found it helpful, smash a like button, let me know in the comments below. Spend the four minutes, go through, rework your content. So here is the structure I would do, okay? First, make the content in AI, but don't just ask it to write an article. Walk it through. Learn as you're creating. Then give it a human pass. Hey, let's, uh, let's humanize this. Let's rewrite it. Give it the prompts that we listed here and on downloadmynotes.com. Get those prompts, try them out. Then go through... Um, put it on your site, see where it ranks, see how it does, and then go through and add your own stuff. Building and adding is going to be key because if I can find out, like if I was to go on one of my websites, let's, let's do a little test and show you guys. What I do is I go to my website and I find out what I rank for that has a lot of search volume, but I'm not showing up for yet, right? So like here, I'm seeing, okay, well, I ranked for GoDaddy domain. How do I make that better? Like right now, I'm working on an article about AppSumo. Why? Because I want to get in front of those 15,000 people. And I can write a good article about that. I got it without even trying. Right? This is just, I think I just mentioned AppSumo somewhere on this. Yeah, there we go. AppSumo, email, uh, whatever. And this was an AI article. So it was doing okay. Right? But again, don't just do AI. Now, I will tell you that was AI based on my video. It was not straight AI. Um, so looking at that, it's like, okay, going for some of the words that look good and reworking them. Here's one about um, Code Canyon. Could I get that ranking? I, I think I could. Again, focus on good things that will actually help people and work. Um, that is the key. That is always the key is making good stuff. Um, go to download my notes to get the notes from this and try this out. Make, let AI help you make content rather than just trying to put content out for content's sake. Do good things. Focus on the end user. If the, the best thing to do is will this stand on its own? If I was to go door to door and hand out my content, would people find it valuable if they were interested in it, right? That's the key. That's what you got to look at. Smash that like button. Thanks for being here. Write some good content. Let me know how it goes. Don't spend